Welcome back. Our handheld of last year was the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. It was light, fit into your pants, and cool like tree ball soft mints. Half a year later, Retro have come out with a new flavor, Clam Shell. Can this one yet again dominate the market? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. Yet again, we've got a package. Point. Inside, we have a cardboard box. Just like how I get my blow of dolls. We're greeted with this card. And it's a quick starter guide. Here's the handheld. We get a microfiber cloth. And a USB-C cable. We'll use this for charging or data transfer. And there's nothing else in the box, that's it. Here's a retro pocket flip. And let's have a look around. On and off switch is the bottom left here. Three and a half millimeter audio jack. And turn it around to the side, we've got the volume rocker. On the top here, we've got micro HDMI, so we can plug it up to our TV if we need to. Here's a USB-C for data transfer or charging. Then we have the shoulder buttons, L2 and R2 are analog, and then two extra buttons for macros. Moving on to the left side now, we have this cover. It's a little difficult to open, but if you've got a pointy nail, should be no problem. And yeah, micro SD. Stick it in here. Towards the bottom we have the stereo speakers, and this in the middle is not a button. It's for air to get in for cooling. The flip has a fan inside, and the exhaust is up here. First impressions are it looks kind of toyish. There's bits of rubber on the edge to stop the buttons from touching the screen, which is wafer thin towards the back of the shell. It's a shame that this bit in the center has no functionality. Would have been nice to have a little trackpad here. Unlike previous Retroid handhelds, the D-pad and buttons are raised higher and more pronounced. To hold, it's not too bad, but the buttons feel a bit too small for my gorilla hands. Let's have a closer look. D-pad is quite decent, very similar to a Super Nintendo controller. These sliders feel like the one on the PSP, just larger. And the buttons aren't the easiest to push down, and they feel like prescription medicine with a little bit of texture. Start and select are clicky. The L1 and R1 shoulder buttons feel too thin and have far too much travel. You can push them from all angles though. The analog triggers feel quite nice and the extra buttons just click. Takes about time now for the size comparison. Here's a retro flip compared to the Retro Bucket 3 Plus. The adorable Miu Mini and the classic Game Boy. But we should really bring out the 3DS Double L. So the flip screen size is exactly the same as the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. As to the body, it shares similarities to the 3DS LL. But between these two, the flip feels not as sleek and a bit more like a toy. There's nothing wrong with toys, ask Beverly. The way that this clicks while opening and closing is not present with a flip. While we park a Ferrari, let's have a look at the specs. The Flip shares a similar loadout to the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. Here we have a slightly larger battery, active cooling, and of course the different form factor, with sliders instead of analog sticks. On first boot, we need to configure settings for language, Wi-Fi, and decide which apps to install. And even without Google Play, we can get RetroArch and Pussy on this in no time. Now to insert the micro SD. Without nails, it is difficult. Here's my manky card. Let's get it in. Nope, guess again. Do you always have problems getting it in? We might need a tool for this. Here's a chopstick. Ah, there we go. This then makes folders on the micro SD, which we can copy our ROMs to, and then we need to set up each emulator. We wish Retroid would have done a better job with this, as it still feels a bit too hands-on compared to other emulator handhelds. We can then choose which systems are shown on the front end, and things can finally start to take shape. But even when the ROMs are in the folders it gave us, we still need to point it to the right location. And then scan. And now we have an emulation system we can actually use. Select a game, and off we play. Lighter systems like Game Boy Advance and Pang 3 work straight out the box. But as soon as you run something like PlayStation 2, expect to play a lot with emulation options. There are many setting guides online for the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, which can also be used for the flip. It's time to test some games. First up is Amiga. No problems here.
Nintendo Game Boy. Commander Keen on Game Boy Color. Mega Man Zero Four, Game Boy Advance. Pokemon Diamond for the Nintendo DS. We use Drastic, the DS emulator, which is available for around five dollars on the Google Play Store. Here's a bit of Mario Kart DS. Moving on to consoles now, here's Castlevania on the NES. And a bit of Super Nintendo. Sparkster. And Space Ace. Mm -hmm. F Zero X N sixty four. The analog sliders feel precise, but due to the size, they're a bit twitchy. And with Pilot Wing sixty four, we can see more issues with the default settings. Better GameCube now. Here's Rocky. Here's Double Dash. We use Dolphin to get this running and it runs about 80% full speed at default settings. f GX, not worth it. But Riven Heaven Fever definitely is. Moving on to the Sega systems now, here's Streets of Rage on the Mega Drive. Virtual Racer 32X. Sega Saturn. Sega Rally 2 on the Dreamcast. While Sega Rally 2 is a very demanding game for the Dreamcast, we can take it to another level with Neo Geo Battle Coliseum for Thomas Wave. And now for some Sony. Ape Escape here, and using the dual sticks isn't ideal, but it's not too bad. Road Rush 3D. But it's time to push it. Here's some PSP, and all of these games are running at three times native resolution. Vice City Stories. And Tekken 6. It's on PlayStation 2 now, with Gradius 5. Tekken 5. And Gran Turismo 4.
So PlayStation 2 is possible on the system, but you need to think of it as an extra. A lot of fiddling is needed. Rather than be confined to emulation, the Flip can also run plenty of Android apps that can be downloaded from the Play Store. This one here is called Long Boy, and it's a bit of a puzzle game. For games that only use touchscreen out of the box, we can use the floating icon to assign our controls to areas of the screen. To do this we slide out from the right, then faff a bit here, and Bob's your uncle. Vice City for Android works well, the limit would be maybe Genshin Impact with some slowdown. If you wanted to play something more demanding, It'd be a good idea to use Steam Link. We can essentially stream any game from your PC to this handheld via the Wi-Fi. Just make sure you got the resolution limit to 720p, select your game, and off you go. In the specs, it mentions the active fan. It's set to off as default, but if we turn it on and use the balance setting, we can hear it, but let's change it to performance. Oh dear. It's not even shifting that much air. Using the smart setting, the fan will only turn on when it's needed, but we've had no problems with the fan turned off. Another thing we noticed is how much of a fingerprint magnet this sports red colour is, and apparently the watermelon variety is a better choice if this bothers you. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Retro Pocket Flip is a fine emulation handheld with a bright display and a very long battery life. Unfortunately, setting it up as a chore, and the thin shoulder buttons, together with the fingerprint paint, make it look like a cheap Fisher Price toy. If you're thinking of grabbing either the Flip or the 3 Plus, they are both fine handhelds. The biggest difference is the form factor. Do you prefer to look at the display of a toy like DS, or a sleek looking PSP? It was actually more comfortable to play on the sofa using the Flip, but I very much preferred the buttons of the 3 Plus. Is the Flip good? Yeah. But it's not as good as this one. Here's a big thank you to all of those supporting us on our Patreon. Thanks guys. We make video reviews like this one, tutorials, and help fix those cheap arcade boxes and the A500 Mini. If you appreciate our work, please jump on, or a simple like and subscribe. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! It is tea time. I will go get Beverly by the fire for some loving. Yum yum.